What is up everybody? Welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to run Windows games on your Retro Pocket 5 and Android. I'm currently running Tomb Raider Game of the Year Edition. So with this said, let's get started. Now before we begin, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to my channel, really helps me grow so I can keep on bringing content for you guys like this. So what we need to do next is we need to download a version of Win Later that is going to allow us to run this game and also be able to boot it up from our front end, which in my case I'm using ESDE. So the version of Win Later that we need to download is the one that has a mod glibc. So that's the one you need to download in order to be able to boot the game from your front end. Otherwise you can still run the game directly through Win Later if you don't mind. So let's begin the setup. You're going to navigate to winlater.org and you're going to click on the download tab. Here it's going to open the GitHub page and you're going to see winlater9. Currently winlater9.0 is the most recent version. So by the time you may be watching this video, it's possible there may be a newer one. If you want ESE to boot up your winlater games, you need to use the winlater with the glibc mod. If you navigate to the main winlater page, when you click on the fork, you should be able to see different forks for winlater and some of those have the glibc mod. Feel free to download any of those or if you want to download the most recent release of winlater, go ahead and download it right here from releases once you have your apk downloaded you're going to install it and once it's installed you're going to open it so in order for you to run games on here you need to set up a container so i currently have one container created right here but what i'm going to do is create a new one for you guys to follow these steps so i'm going to name this container yt for youtube there's going to be a lot of configurations here that you can change but for the most part the stock configurations work well there's just a few ones that we got to change as we go so first is the screen size here in the screen size change it to your device screen size also there's a wine version you can leave it as custom all this should be kept as custom but for example if you want to change the graphics driver you should be able to click on the gear and select whichever graphic driver you want so right now we're going to just create this new container out of the box and we didn't make any changes because we're not able to do that right away once the container is created click on the three dots and click on edit now we should be able to make our own custom changes so like i was talking about for the graphics driver if you want to change it you can click on the gear icon and then here you get to choose whichever turnip driver you want to run i'm going to leave it as is the same thing with the dx wrapper so click on the gear icon and you should be able to change the version i'm leaving this as is i personally prefer the dark theme for win later but feel free to leave it as light and for the memory size i recommend to put the max memory size now for the gpu feel free to put whatever gpu i think the nvidia geforce 1080 works well but feel free to put whichever you like and play around with them but the gpu doesn't matter as much as other configurations for win later we can check the tab for win components here there's also a few other things that you can change but i think that the default ones work well you can also change the environment variables if you want to but i think the most important part right here is the drives here in the drives tab you're going to have the download folder from your android device as well as the e drive which in my case this is mapping to the win later storage here you want to add a new drive if you have an sd card you're going to select a folder right here you're going to select your sd card and in my case i have a roms folder and in my roms folder i have roms for all my games in here so i'm going to use this folder and i'm going to allow win later to access this folder next you click on advanced and you're going to see different presets here so for startup selection i recommend to leave it as aggressive and for processor affinity for 64-bit apps you can leave all the cores enabled but for 32-bit apps i recommend to disable the first four cores so only leaving core four through seven enabled for this if you scroll up a little bit more you're also going to see the box 64 preset this is really important because it will allow you to run games better or worse depending on the preset so as you can see i have a performance and a compatibility one that i have previously created so before we change that box 64 preset we're going to click on the check mark to save our changes for our yt container and now on the top left menu you're going to click on settings and right here you're going to see presets right here in this presets select the performance preset and you're going to press a little copy icon the one on the left of the trash can here is going to duplicate this preset and once you duplicate it, it's going to tell you the name of the preset and in this case you see that it says performance one so if we edit this preset right here i recommend to put the save flags as two and the big block as three you're going to save this preset by pressing the check mark and then you go back to containers here in containers you go back to your yt container you press the three dots and you edit again you scroll down to the tab that says advanced and right here you can select the preset that you previously created so let's select the performance one and now you can actually save your container and you can boot it up 
Once it boots up, you're going to see basically this window that has all of our drives. And do you remember that I added my SD card as a drive? This is my drive F. This process that I'm going to be talking about is if you don't have a PC. I personally don't have a PC. I have a Mac. My Mac is a little bit old, so it doesn't run all those new programs that will allow you to install Windows games. So I can just transfer the files directly from my computer to my Retro Pocket 5. So I am going to be installing them on my Retro Pocket 5 directly. I'm going to be copying those files back to my SD card. And then I'm going to uninstall the game directly from my device and I'm going to launch it now from my SD card. If you have a PC, feel free to transfer the unpacked files directly from your PC to your Retro Pocket 5. So you can see that I have all my ROMs right here. So I have added my installation files right here in Windows. So open that folder where you have your installation files. It should be an EXE file. Open that and then you can start the process of installing the game. Depending on how big the game is, this process may take a long time. So just be patient. I'm going to be installing Tomb Raider and then I'm going to be booting it up so you guys can see that the game works. And just a reminder, not all the games perform well on Win later, so you just have to try out and see which games work. Some work better than others. So one thing really important here is if you're using an SD card, when you install the game from your SD card, this is going to be installed directly into your Retroid Pocket 5 or your Android device storage. I personally don't want to have my games installed in the device's storage because depending on the game, the size can be really big and I don't want my device storage to be used for win later games so what you're going to do is you're going to click on the c drive and on the c drive you're going to see this gog folder inside this gog folder you're going to see the game that you just installed click on this folder and copy it now i'm going to navigate back to my f drive which is my sd card and i'm going to find the windows folder and here i'm going to paste the installation files for tomb raider so what happened here is i installed tomb raider and it got installed in the internal storage of my device and now what i'm doing is copying the file to my sd card that way when i launch the game is launching from my sd card and not my retro pocket 5 so this is going to take a bit to copy the files depending on the size of your game so be patient now that the files have been done copied to my sd card you're going to click on the c drive you're going to see this gog folder inside this gog folder you're going to see the game that you just installed i'm going to be uninstalling tomb raider from my device also another thing I wanted to discuss in this video is how to launch win later games from or front end. So in my case, I like to use ESDE to run my games. So we need to add a shortcut for our win later games so that ESDE can read those. As you can see, I have a few shortcuts created here, but I'm going to teach you how to create your own shortcuts. So you're going to open whatever container you have your games in. Go to the drive that you have your games installed and open that folder. In my case, they're in my SD card, in my F drive, and they're in my Windows folder. In here, I'm going to open the Tomb Raider folder and you're going to see Tomb Raider.exe. This is the exe file that is going to launch my game. So right here with two fingers, you're going to tap on the screen and basically you're mimicking a right click. And in here, you're going to click on create shortcut. This is going to generate a shortcut for you. And once the shortcut is created, feel free to close everything. You're going to click on the top left menu. You're going to click on shortcuts. And right here, you're going to see whatever shortcuts you created. Here, you're going to click on the three dots and you're going to click on export for front end. And it's going to give you a path where Win later send your shortcuts to. In my case, this is going to be in files. And in my downloads folder, you're going to see Win later front end. And right here, you're going to see Tomb Raider because I already had created this shortcut previously. That's why it says Tomb Raider one. But in your case, you should not have the little one right there. You're going to select this shortcut. You're going to click on move to and here navigate to the folder where you have your ROMs. In my case, it's in my SD card ROMs and in here, I have my windows folder i'm going to move my shortcut in here and once you move your shortcut here you can close your files manager then you can open your front end which in my case again is esd navigate through the category and you should see a windows category once you open this category here you're going to see the games that you have created shortcuts to for your front end here i have tomb raider so now you can launch the game directly from here now i'm going to boot up my game directly from esde here you guys can see Tomb Raider running on here. You guys saw this at the beginning of the video. And the performance of the game overall is pretty good. The FPS definitely goes above 30. There were some areas where it definitely dips a little bit to like 16, 17. But I believe there are some optimizations that can be done. I will not be covering that in this video. But that is something you can definitely look forward to. Because this game can be optimized even more to have better performance on here. As you have seen the performance of Tomb Raider has been pretty consistent. Overall I don't see any issues or any any glitches within the game itself which is pretty good because not all games run this well on win later we're going to be trying out another game so you guys can see that this game also runs well and this game is an open world game 
Here's the second game we're showcasing, which is Sleeping Dogs. This is an open world, and it has been said that this is a Chinese GTA. I played this in my PS4 back in the day, and honestly, it was one of the best games I played in a long time. The atmosphere and everything was pretty dope, and honestly, it's really impressive seeing this playing on the Retroid Pocket 5. This is a little bit past the first mission, and you can see that the FPS is not the best, but it's definitely stable. I believe this game also has some configurations that can be made to run the game better, and that is something I also need to look into it, but at least out of the box, we can see that the game performs pretty decent that is all for this video thank you guys for watching don't forget to drop a like subscribe to my channel and i will see you guys next time